So now that we have all of our textures, okay, in side of Unity, let's add them to the OPCD arrays. Now, if you do not know what an OPCD array is, and you do not what, know how the slots work, and the base array, and the albedo, and the normal array, and the detailed array, you need to go back to the um, OPCD MOS uh, theory video in the previous sections and go through that and understand because I'm not going to explain it again here. Okay, we are just going to do it and 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 get you going. So let's get into Unity. So I'm in Unity and here's our forest floor that we imported from Quixel. Um, we changed our normal inside of our MAHS. I'm sorry, our roughness inside there. One thing we need to do is we need to go into our normal map right here and we need to change this to a normal map. So let's go up here and do normal map and hit apply. So that tells Unity that this is a normal map and it treats it a little bit differently. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to add these things to our array. So where are, where are our arrays? Um, inside of our MOS resources, so resources, OPCD MOS resources, arrays, here are the arrays that come with the base package. Now, the first thing I always like to do before I make changes to things like this, and we're only going to be making changes to the detail textures and the normal textures, okay, those two arrays. So I'm going to make copies of these first. So I'm going to right click and I am going to say duplicate or better yet, I'm going to say control D and duplicate and it'll create a copy of this. It'll take a second. And that copy is going to serve as kind of like my backup, okay? Because if I screw this up, I want to be able to uh, go back and reassign this. So I'm going to say call this 2048 uh, underscore backup. Cool. And I'm going to do the same thing with my normal array as well. So I'm going to right click on this or I'm not going to right click on this. I'm going to go to control D. That's going to duplicate that one. Come on, you can do it. And now I have my backup there as well. 24 underscore backup. And if everything works correctly, you can come back and you can delete these. And as a matter of fact, you probably do. Um, so now let's work with the non backup versions. Uh, if we change the backup versions to street member, let's look at this quick. If we go in here into this texture, and so for all these different materials that we have, for example, here's our OPCD MOS deep rough materials, here's where those arrays are assigned. So, and so if I do my detail array, so that's the one we just made the copy of. Here's my normal array, the one I made the copy of. So if I completely hose this up, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to come over here and take my backup here and put it into my detail array in order to fix that, okay? Um, you would have to do that for every material in here though, so because they all point to these. So hopefully you don't screw this up. <laughs> um, actually, if you, yeah, if you screw it up, then you're gonna have to uh, uh, fix that that way. So back here into our, let's go back into our forest floor, and I'm gonna come, uh, actually, let's go back into our arrays folder. I'm gonna come up here to window, and where's my texture array creator? So this is another window, a tool that's going to pop up. And the first thing we have to do is we have to load our existing detail texture array in here by dragging into the slot. Make sure that we are on the array resolution of 2048. It says so right in the name what it is. And then we're going to load it. Now, when we load that up, this array size is 40. Okay, And remember what this is. Uh, this has a uh, it has an albedo and its corresponding MOS. So element zero is an albedo. Number one is its corresponding MOS. So these are paired all the way down to 39. So if we want to add one more texture here, we need to actually add two more spots in the array. One for the albedo, one for the MOS. So if this size is 40, we're going to now make this 42. And when we do that, down here at the bottom, we now have two more slots. Oops, I have to hit enter. So now I have two more slots, 40 and 41. 
So the first spot is going to take our albedo. Drop that there. Our second spot is going to take our moss. Put that there. I'm going to actually now overwrite that array. And this will take a little bit because we are repacking 41, actually 42 different textures in there now. So I'm going to hit that and I'm going to pause. Okay, so we've done the detail array. Now we need to do our normal array. So let's go back in here to normals. And remember, we added 41 and 42. Now the detail, the tet normal array, let's first go back up here to window, texture array creator. Let's drag in our normal array here. It's gonna take a second to load or not. I believe it's thinking. Yes, it just took a while to think. We had changed this to 1024. Load existing array. And you can see that we have 0 through 19. 19, this one corresponds to the, to correspond to the last slot that was in our previous detail texture array. Okay, so now we need to add one more for the texture that we just added in the detail array. So we're going to change this to 21 now. So this will correspond to the spot 40. Enter. And this is where our normal map's going to go now. So take our, whoops, we don't want to put our normal array in there. We want to go back to our forest floor, find our normal, drop this in right here. There, we got it. And let me make this window a little bit bigger. Oops, it's down here. We're going to overwrite our array, and that's going to take a minute or two as well. So I'm going to pause the video. So now that we have our new arrays created, let's go in and apply them to one of our meshes. So this is the mesh that I want to put it on. And this is a custom, which is essentially a deep rough material at the moment. So it's this deep rough material. Let's do this. Let me, I'm going to duplicate this deep rough material. Now, depending on which one you're duplicating using your Zabase, you might have to change different things to get this to work. And this is where this base understanding of knowledge and all the nerd knobs, you know, go back and look at the tutorials I already did, uh, get you to understand this. So let me show you here. So let's do this. Let's look at the one that's existing and highlight this. I'm going to duplicate it. Let's go to this, the one that I, the duplicate I just made. And I'm just going to call this, rename it to Forest Floor. All right, so I got Forest Floor. Let me highlight my mesh again and change this mesh to my Forest Floor. Now, nothing happens because, well, it's a duplicate of what was already there, right? But let's go into our Forest Floor. And you can see in here, I got a couple different things. Well, I've got a sat shader that's well, assigned to this, but I'm not sure if it's being used. But if we go down to the red channel, now this assumes that this is the red channel is being used, and by default, all of our meshes have, except for bunkers, have red channel assigned. And we've got a base index of two, and we got a red detail index of six. Remember, we added this particular texture, our texture we just created, into slot 40, right? So let's type in 40 here. Now, if you put it into a different slot or you're adding multiple textures, you're going to need to adjust that number. So I changed that to 40, and nothing happened. Oh, something did happen. Now let's, if I zoom, let me find a sunny area here. So you can see it, there is something there, but what's going on? Well, this is where the understanding okay, of these knobs really helps over here. So remember that we have these base indexes, and the base index are those textures that we put on top of grass and sand. Well, we're, we don't really want to use it here, so let's get rid of that. Like, ooh, that's looking a little bit better. Let me zoom in even a little bit more. But it's got this green tint to it. Where could that be coming from? Well, let's go down to our red channel details. Actually, let's go down to our red. Let's move this up to brightness all the way. We might need to lower that again later on. But if we go to the red uh, channel details, we can see, oh, we got a lot of stuff going on here you probably don't want. One is we got this base color tint. Oh, 
Oh, well, the base color is turned off. So that one's not going to remind but Remember, we turned the base color off up above. So that's not doing this shouldn't do anything. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. But I thought because it was the green one, it's creating a green hue. But it looks like it's the red detail color tint. Let's turn that. Ooh, it's getting better. Okay. Up to brightness up to the upper left corner. And let's turn the saturate down as well. Ah, this is starting to look much more like the one we created in Quixel. Now what we can do is we can start to adjust here. And if I lower this, this is starting to look much better and things that we want to do here. And I can go up and I can maybe make this a little bit, eh, I don't know if I like it green. But the bottom line is now we can tweak it. I'm thinking a little bit more blue, a little bit darker. This is looking much better. And actually, this looks pretty good for a forest floor, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. Now I'm going to have to adjust my biome here because it looks like some rocks and trees are going out of that mesh. Or I could come in. Remember, if you have some good knowledge here, you could take this texture and assign it to a different channel for this deep rough here. So this was the one that we were using before. Assign that to like the blue channel. And then I could vert paint the same thing out here a little bit further. If I want to get even more advanced, I could just create another texture that's just leaves and not the rocks. But this looks really good. I'm actually digging this. I might just use this one. Um, now, is there anything else I am forgetting at this point? I don't think I am forgetting anything. Uh, so I'm going to end this video. And now you know how to add additional textures to your arrays and do some custom work. Oh, one thing. Don't go crazy adding these. These are going to bloat the size of your project. You think about those, those are large images, and there's multiple images associated with each slot in the array. Um, you could potentially replace some of the slots with these if you don't want to grow it out. But DPR's advice is only add maybe four more additional uh, textures to your arrays. Okay? So uh, good luck on your course.